Hey Guardians, it's Echo Doctrine here for Planet Destiny, and today we're going to cover all the major bullet points about the content that will be coming with the next expansion, The Rise of Iron. We are about two weeks away from the September 20th release date. The $30 expansion will be available to play at 2 a.m. Pacific, that's 5 a.m. Eastern, and 10 a.m. UK time. Pre-orders are available now from both Sony and Microsoft stores, and general gaming stores as well. The pre-order bonus currently is the Iron Gala Wing Sparrow, and the black and silver version of the Iron Gala Horn. For those players that have yet to get Destiny, you can purchase Destiny The Collection, which is a bundle that includes the vanilla game, as well as all the DLCs up to this point that have been released, and The Rise of Iron. Now, let's do a quick breakdown of all the content that's coming with The Rise of Iron. This is going to be a short summary of each item, and for extended information on each topic, check back for Plant Destiny for all the detailed descriptions of everything that's coming. First, for the scope of the expansion. Bungie has said it's going to be in between the size of a House of Wolves and the Taken King in scale size, somewhere in between the two. It will feature a new social space, Felwinter Peak, which players will first have to reclaim in a fight against the fallen enemies, and that's going to be a first that we've done in Destiny. It's also going to feature a new expansive playable zone that's going to be called the Plaguelands, and we know of at least one old patrol area in the Cosmodrome that's being changed graphically and added with snow-covered terrain and new enemies that we're going to be fighting. The campaign size is stated to be a five-mission campaign, but we believe much like the Taken King, which had eight campaign missions, that after you finish the main five missions, you're going to begin a quest system. The Rise of Iron is going to feature something similar that's going to happen after the campaign. One of these quests is going to introduce players into the new arena area, the Archon's Forge. The Archon's Forge is a new cooperative arena in the Plaguelands, and it will feature a wave-based activity lasting around five minutes with unique encounters and unique rewards as well. It's going to function very similar to the Court of Oryx, in which you're going to have to find various splicer items in the patrol modes and then bring them to the forge and place them inside to start the encounter. But then similar to the Prison of Elders, it will have wave-based combat along with bosses. Now with all of these new missions, rewards, and encounters, we also have a level increase as well. But the level cap will remain at 40, however the light level is going to be increased from 335 to 385 and then further increased up to 400 when the hard mode raid unlocks. Now no firm date for the hard mode raid has been released at this time, but that brings us to the next content to talk about, a new raid. Finally, Guardians will have a new six player raid called the Wrath of the Machine to throw themselves into. The raid will launch three days after the release on the 23rd of September, and normal mode will start first along with hard mode at a later date. Now Bungie has been very quiet about the raid details as they want many players to experience it for themselves, but we do know the raid developers talked about the ideas of collision and smashing things and other things as a concept behind the raid. They referred to King's Fall, the Taken King raid, as kind of raid college, and now the Wrath of the Machine will be purely about fun and playing up the strengths of the Destiny sandbox. We've already seen video of Guardians running from what Bungie has affectionately titled a Death Zamboni, so it looks like this raid might be a little bit more fast paced than the raids we've previously seen. And of course, a new raid means new raid gear and weapons. We also have new strikes to talk about. We have one brand new strike, the Wretched Eye, and then two older strikes are now being revamped. Those older strikes are the Devil's Lair and the Summoning Pits. A new mechanic is also being introduced called Skeleton Keys into the strikes. The Skeleton Keys are going to become a new mechanic in which they have a chance at dropping after an encounter and then each strike will have unique rewards that you can use one of the keys to open a special chest to get that reward. But we're not only getting just new raid and strike items, we also have new faction, vanguard, and crucible weapons and gear to collect. Along with that, shaders are actually going to affect the class items like cloaks and bonds, so we can actually change the appearance of the shaders as well. And a new cosmetic system called ornaments is being added that will change the color and the geometry of gear like we've never seen before. Now with all this new PvE content, don't worry, PvP is not being left behind. First, a new PvP mode called Supremacy is coming. This mode features points being rewarded, not necessarily for killing enemies, but instead 
by picking up the killed enemy's dropped crests, which look very similar to engrams, and then picking up friendly team crests to prevent the enemies from collecting those points. Many first-person shooter fans are seeing this mode very similar to Kill Confirmed in the Call of Duty and the other FPS games, and it is some very similar characteristics. The new Supremacy mode will also be featured in the new Iron Banner when it's updated and returned. Also, the long-demanded feature of private matches is finally coming to Destiny. Players will be able to have lobbies of one player all the way up to 12 and start any game of their choice with the option to pick the map game type, light level, vehicles, even the time of day. After a lackluster response to artifacts from the Taken King, they're coming back in a big way with eight new artifacts that are going to do far more game-changing mechanics, like removing your super and replacing it with double grenades and melees and improved stats, or the ability to convert enemies to fight with you, and even another artifact that adds a reflectability to your sword-heavy weapons, letting you reflect energy-based projectiles. Planet Destiny has a full breakdown of each of the eight artifacts and their abilities. Of course, with all this, we also have new trophies and achievements coming, and clan features are getting a very large overhaul as well. The user interface for the quests and inventory pages are also going to be changed, and Bungie has acknowledged that Vault Space, eh, while sadly it's going to remain unchanged at Rise of Iron's release, but Bungie did acknowledge that they have some options and things are being worked on so hopefully in the future we'll have a little more information. Eververse Trading Company will also be changing slightly with new packages called Radiant Treasures that will function similarly to Sterling packages, but they will give Guardians ornaments, ships, sparrows, and when dismantled, they'll now provide a new currency called Silver Dust. That Silver Dust, we understand, can be spent at Xur for other items as well. There's a lot of big changes coming to Destiny, and we may learn of even more details before the September 20th release. Planet Destiny has full videos and articles breaking down all of the specifics and details from each of these items coming in the Rise of Iron, including a walkthrough of the new Wretched Eye Strike, thoughts on the new Crucible maps, artifacts, weapons, and gear. So if you saw something in this quick video today and you want more details, it's probably covered on the Planet Destiny page. You can also find me on Twitter and YouTube covering Destiny and other games at Echo Doctrine, and in the description box below. Thank you all so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and are as excited for Rise of Iron as we are.